Wait, yes. Introduce yourself. I'm Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jared. Hi. I'll do it. At the end, I have my email address oh, okay. and name. That's not that interesting. Um, yeah, so I run into these problems, and I've prototyped a million games, and they all end up bad. They're, you know, too much like doing a math problem or something like that, not actually fun. Um, try to prototype the games, they never come out good. But you guys have made good games, so I thought I'd show you some of the problems I thought were kind of fun. Uh, and see if you guys like them too, or not. <laughs> uh, I, I, my plan is just to tell you about four problems, uh, varying very, uh, levels of difficulty. I'm not going to tell you how to solve any of them, because that's not the fun part, the telling you how to solve them. I'm just going to leave them open. You can play with the problems. Um, you can ask me questions. You can interrupt me. It can be real informal. Uh, yeah, my plan is to only hopefully talk for like 10, 15 minutes, and then let you play with the puzzles, or take a nap, whatever. <laughs> so OK, so the first one. Uh, so this is uh, Conway's Angel and Devil. This is the same Conway from Conway's Game of Life. Maybe you've heard of John Horton Conway. Yep, very cool guy. Uh, smart man. Um, <clears throat> so this problem, it's a two-player game. It's on an infinite checkerboard. Don't be uh, confused by my actual checkerboard. Uh, it takes place between an angel and a devil. The angel is actually physically located on the board. The devil is, uh, you know, somewhere else in Hades or something. So on the angel's turn, we're going to start off with the weakest angel. The angel moves like a king in chess. So diagonals, up, down, left, right, one space. Uh, on the devil's turn, the devil destroys a tile so that that tile can never be used again. I put walls in it because I didn't know how to destroy a tile. So, <clears throat> so uh, devil destroys a tile, angel moves. Devil destroys a tile, angel moves. The devil wins this game if the devil can trap the angel. The angel wins if the angel can escape forever. So the question is, <coughs> who wins? Uh, so quite a power, uh, quite a complicated problem, it turns out. Conway couldn't figure it out. He asked his friend, uh, co-author, Burlicamp, also a really smart man, uh, if he had any ideas. Burlicamp proved it for this, the case I just described, and call this the one-powered angel. Uh, so then Conway says, OK, well, that's, you solved it. Let's do another one. What if the angel can move two squares in any one direction? You can't go up and then diagonal, but two up, two diagonal. And uh, with the destroyed squares, you can hop over them, uh, but you can't land on a destroyed square. Does that make sense? Uh, then, so he said, OK, try that. Uh, Conway couldn't figure it out. Burlicam couldn't figure it out. It's an extremely difficult problem. So Conway wanted to sweeten the pot. He offered, uh, he obviously had some intuition. He thought that the angel, surely there's a big enough number so that the million-powered angel can win this game. So he, he uh, said, I'll give $100 to anyone who can prove that there's some angel that can win this. Uh, and I'll give you $1,000 if uh, you can prove that the devil always wins. Uh, and sort of those uh, $100 doesn't sound like maybe a ton, but you know, it's sort of pride dollars. If you've got money from Conway, that's worth a lot of money or uh, points. <laughs> that's the question. Um, it's easy to look up. Uh, so uh, when I first heard about this problem, uh, it was, the problem was popularized by this book here by Peter Winkler. When I first heard about the problem, it was unknown um, <clears throat> what the answer was. Uh, I think, I don't know, a few years later, uh, I can't remember when it was solved, maybe 2008, something like that. It, it has been solved. Uh, you can easily look up the answer on Wikipedia, but it's more fun to play around with it. Um, yeah, so see if you can uh, play with that one. Yeah. yeah the question was, uh, can the two-powered angel opt to not use both, uh, <clears throat> both moves, so to speak, and just move one space? I believe the answer is the angel has to move both squares. But it's a good question. Correct. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah we'll, we'll, th we'll think about this. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do four. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Oh, no, I want to be derailed, because I don't want to do too much math problems. Just because it'll hurt our brains. Do a little bit. I like this. This, this one is not nearly as hard, um, but it's fun. And I like it because it sort of illustrates how weird um, the eight-way movement can be sometimes. <clears throat> so in this one, um, this one is a finite checkerboard, but you get to pick uh, how big a board you want. It can be 100 by 100, 1,000 by 1,000. Um, and we're going to place arrows on it. So imagine we're making like water currents. And if the player lands on one of the water currents, the player's forced to move in the direction the arrows are sending them, or her. Uh, there's one constraint on the arrows, which is that they all have to be within 45 degrees of their neighbor. Ah, you have great question. Eight neighbors. And that's why it gets weird. 
but that's maybe hints. I don't know. Um, so if you notice on this, <coughs> the board that I have drawn here, if you plop a lemming, I guess is the original problem, or a rogue, whatever you want, down anywhere on the board, eventually you fall off the edge or onto the land or whatever it is, right? I think this one's correct, but I don't know. I might have made a mistake. <clears throat> the question is, uh, can you design a board? You can make it as big as you want. You can make it a million by a million so that uh, there is a loop somewhere in it. There is a place to drop a character, and they will spiral in an eddy forever. That's the question. Okay. Two of four. This one starts off not very roguelike-y, um, but it gets more. <clears throat> roguelike as we go. This is a, a very classic problem. Um, a, I don't know what you would call it, like differential game theory. It's easy to state, but hard to, hard to do anything with. Uh, it gets very, very messy very quickly. But the idea is simple. So you're at, you're at a points in a plane, a continuous plane, XY plane. Uh, there's a homicidal chauffeur who wants to run over the poor man. And they're both moving at a constant rate. Uh, the man or the rogue, let's call it the rogue, can, uh, <clears throat> has great maneuverability. He can move forward, backwards, as quickly as they want. The car is, sort of has a restricted turning radius of some kind. It's pretty vague. The, the, the problem is, well, when you make that less vague and you say, what is the constant speed the car's moving at? What's the constant speed the road's work moving at? How are you restricting the, the turning maneuverability of the car? Under what circumstances do you create a car that can win? And under what circumstances can you make a poor rogue that has to run for eternity? from the homicidal chauffeur. Um, yeah, so this is a classic continuous problem. And I think, there's a lot, I think there's a lot of good problems in sort of differential game theory that you can make discrete and turn into interesting problems that haven't been done. I don't think a lot of people have thought this, done this before. Uh, before I show you the discrete version, I want to mention just that this does show up in one game, I think, in a super cool way. Uh, any of you guys like Star Control 1 and 2? Yeah, it's a great game. Do, you, do you, any of you guys remember the... I guess I'm not a good fan. I can't remember how to pronounce that. Merner. <laughs> Did any of you remember that ship? There was this awesome ship where you could, it had two modes, and you could switch between the modes. One was faster, less maneuverable. Uh, maneuverable. The other one was way more maneuverable, but slower. And if you w go to YouTube and watch some people use the ship, it's, it's amazing. Uh, they must have intuitive ideas of uh, differential equations in their head. I don't know what they do. They, <laughs> they utilize it well. All right, so... Um, <clears throat> Um, if you guys have heard of Martin Gardner, he wrote a column for, yeah, super influential guy. He wrote a column for scientific. He did die a few years ago. Very sad, huge loss. Absolutely, yeah. All the, all the big name mathematicians loved him and considered him, you know. <laughs> he was sort of a self taught man, too. Very interesting guy. So he turned this problem into a, uh, a discrete problem. And this is just one way you could do it. There's probably a million ways, but this is just sort of an instance. Uh, just give you an idea for how you could go about turning one of these games into something roguelike something fun. Uh, he has you start with a 50 by 50 board. Um, that's just big enough to contain all the interesting things. You could start off smaller and, or make it bigger if you want, whatever. <clears throat> the inspiration for this is sort of they're, on, uh, they're in you know, downtown Manhattan and there's all these one-way streets on a grid. That's sort of the intuition in the back of your head. Uh, they're going to take turns moving. The rogue, or the poor man, is gonna, can move up, down, left, right, one square on the rogue's turn. The car has an associated uh, direction. The car has to move in that direction, with the one um, exception that at the beginning of the car's turn, the car can optionally choose to turn right. So either two forward in the direction you're going, or turn right, then go two squares in your um, new direction. I think I mentioned everything. Oh yeah, the car captures the <clears throat> pedestrian if the car is... Uh, within one square or on top of the rogue, uh, including diagonals this time. That's everything. Uh, so the, the, the puzzle here is to find the 69 fatal positions where a uh, man can't get away. So it's a fun problem. But uh, like I said, there's a lot of other uh, continuous problems I think would be fun to turn into dis discrete problems, maybe inspirational for roguelikes, I feel like. All right, last one. This one does not need to be on a checkerboard at all. I just did that for fun. <clears throat> It's a cute probability problem. Yeah, it's a three-way duel. Uh, in in roguelike fashion, they're going to take turns shooting at each other. Um, starts with the blue, then yellow, then red, then blue, then yellow, then red, then blue, then yellow, then red. Uh, they all have some sort of ranged weapon that's lethal if it hits, but they have varying two-hit percentages. 
Blue hits with the probability of one third, yellow with two thirds, and red always hits. So the question here is, uh, what is blue's optimal strategy? Fun little cute probability problem. And this sort of thing does show up in games, not with these numbers, but all the time. Yeah? Uh, I think they have no ties amongst themselves. <laughs> But I don't think that should, oh, I see, yeah, yeah, because you might influence your decision if they shot and missed. Right. Well, they have to pick who to, what did I do? Oh, who Oops. To who to attack. And you kind of, um, you kind of said something that I was, that, uh, there, there's a hint in, <laughs> in me not wanting to answer that question. I don't know if that makes sense. Is that a question? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's fun. And if you do blue, yellow's the next fun one to try. What should yellow do? Um, yeah, that's, that's all I think I was going to talk about to give you guys some time to play with some of them. There are loads of other um, problems in these sort of veins. I made a lot of slides just because I kind of went crazy trying to think about fun problems. Um, so there are tons of others, but I think I'm going to stop there and give you time to play with them. Yeah, let's use it as a break in to play with the problems. I know Peter Winkler quite well, and he's sort of a guru for these things. And I've, um, I've emailed him several times begging for me to help find more where do you get these problems, <laughs> try to pick his brain. I don't know. I've, I've thought about trying to compile something like that. Um, there's nothing out there that I know of. Yeah, they, they get less roguelike as they go too. But um, anyway, that's me. If you guys come across problems, give them to me. Or if I made bad mistakes, let me know. <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so let's talk about the uh, angel problem. <laughs>